Okay, guys, Panzer J back here in Operation Champ. We're up to turn 14, January of 43, the US KMT. So let's get right into uh, the US tech rolls. So we are going to go for um, heavy bombers at stage two, nine or higher. Long range aircraft stage two, seven or higher. Advanced anti submarine warfare not on the board at a seven. Uh, strategic rocket stage two, nine or higher. Radar not on the board at a seven or higher. And let's go for attack transports not on the board at an eight or higher. So let's see what we get here. So we're going to start with the heavy bombers. We need a nine or higher. And an eight, we just missed that. Uh, long range aircraft, seven or higher. A one, we missed that. I have tried for long range aircraft every turn of the game. So that's 14 turns and I've hit it twice. So I know uh, Global War 36 enthusiast is the math whiz. Have him figure out the odds of two out of 14 is not so good. Okay, rant over on to uh, advanced anti-submarine warfare, not on the board at a seven or higher. An eight, we got that. Uh, radar, not on the board, seven or higher. A nine, we got that. Uh, I skipped over strategic rockets. So strate strategic rockets, nine or higher. A five, that's where I needed a nine. And attack transports, eight or higher. That's cocked, so we'll do that one over again. And a five. So two out of six again. So we get on the board with uh, advanced anti-submarine warfare and radar. So not so good. Okay. And the purchases for the United States. So they have $88 to spend. I think we're spending all of it. So we're going to go ahead and get seven destroyers at $6 a piece. That's 42 Going to finish off our light carrier for three, that's 45. A naval transport for six is 51. Two elite marines for 10, uh, that's 61. A regular marine for four, that's 65. A jet for 12, that's 77. And then lend lease the Canadians a medium bomber for 11, that's 88. And for the uh, KMT, We've got 11, and we're going to spend nine of it on three uh, infantry. Okay, so on to combat over here in the uh, Atlantic. We are going to go ahead and attack the Galapagos Islands. Categoric Cow has three militia there. So set those aside. And we're going to come down here from Sea Zone 71. Um, with all these ships, which are uh, two light cruisers, two destroyers, and two naval transports. And we're going to go one, two. So bring all those over. And on those two transports, we've got two Marines and two infantry from Texas. And then the fighter in Panama is going to go one, two as well. So we're going to attack the Galapagos Islands. I believe that's it for combat um, in the Atlantic. Over in the Pacific, we uh, got a few combat moves going on. So over here in Sea Zone 65, this coastal sub in 66 is going to come over one. And then one of our eight advanced subs in 64 is going to come down one, two, three, four, and those two subs are going to go ahead and convoy that line that's worth $5 to the Japanese. Then Madman Dan has got a fighter on combat air patrol there in 38. So this coastal sub is going to come over from 56, going to come over one, and then off of the fleet in Sea uh, Zone 39, we got a tactical bomber on a light carrier, so that's going to come over one, 
And then I've also got uh, six destroyers, and three of them are going to come over into that zone as well. So three destroyers, a coastal sub, and a tactical bomber. Um, and that fighter does have to engage because of the aircraft I'm bringing in. And then here into C-Zone 56, the majority of this fleet here in 39 is going to come down. So what's going to come down is four battleships, seven heavy cruisers, uh, six light cruisers, three destroyers, four coastal subs. And what I'm going to do is try to clear that th this zone of that light carrier and the fighter. And if we succeed with that, then Hokkaido here is empty. And I've got two naval transports in that fleet, and it's going to drop off the two Marines and the two infantry that are in the Krill Islands. I'll walk on there for, for a Hokkaido. So that would be another combat. And let me take a look real quick. I think that's it besides the KMT. So those are the battles for the United States for the KMT. Uh, I probably waited too long. Boston Bruce was... Um, asking the question when Hong Kong was going to happen, and I probably waited too long, but we're going to go for it anyway. So in Hong Kong, uh, Madman Dan has an SNLF infantry, which will be defending at a 5, and a regular infantry defending at a 4. I'm going to have these two mountain infantry in Quang Tung come down, and also uh, this fighter in Quang Tung is going to come down. So... Uh, two mountain infantry and a fighter against an SNLF and an irregular infantry. It looks like it's mountainous, but uh, obviously air units don't suffer that penalty, and my mountain infantry will not suffer it either. Okay, so that's one attack from the uh, KMT. Another one is we have to go back into uh, Shantung here. So um, a board gaming bro has got three infantry there. So we're going to go ahead and send... Eh, I'm not really thrilled about this attack. I guess we're going to go ahead and send... Uh, uh, how about... What do we got here for mountain or for cavalry? Two, four, six. I guess we'll send eight cavalry in. So eight cavalry against those three infantry. Well... So that's, yeah, that's what we'll do, eight. Eh, forget it. Screw it. We're going to send all 11. So 11 cavalry into Shantung. 11 cavalry against his three infantry. And I suppose that's it. So those will be the two attacks for the KMT. So let's go ahead over here uh, for the Galapagos Islands. I do have four units being uh, amphibiously assaulting, so the two light cruisers will get shore bombardment. So I need a one to hit with these. So let's go ahead and do two ones and an 11 to three both miss. So then we've got a fighter to six and a one hits. And then we've got two Marines and two regular infantry all at twos. No hits. So we got one hit. He's down to uh, two militia. Let's roll his three militia at twos. And he got a two, eight, and a seven. So I do not want to suffer double casualty. So I'm going to have to take one of my Marines. And he'll lose one of his militia. Okay, so on to round two. We got our fighter at a six. And a five hits. And then we got three rolls at a two. And we got a 2, 6, and a 12. So we got our two hits. So his two militia, remaining militia, a 7 and a 4, they both miss. So we kill off the rest of the militia and take uh, the Galapagos Islands there with two infantry and a Marine. Not worth anything, but it's pretty important overall for the United States. Okay, so on to the Pacific. So 
we've got, we'll do this one first here in 38. So Madman Dan has a fighter against a coastal sub, three destroyers, and a tactical bomber. So my tactical bomber is a 7, so let's see about that. And a 10 misses, of course. Then we've got three uh, destroyers at a 4. <laughs> 7, 5, and 9, they all miss. And uh, obviously my coastal sub cannot hit his fighter. So now on to his fighter at a 6. A 2 hits, so we'll take the tactical bomber off because he does damage to aircraft on the first round of combat. I got three destroyers at four. Five, 12, and a nine miss. His fighter at a six. An 11 misses. Three destroyers at a four. A one, there we go, we got a hit. So a 12, eight, and a one. His fighter's dead. His fighter in return, a four. I will lose the coastal sub um, as a casualty. So his fighter put up um, a good fight there. Okay, so the next combat is going to be here in 56. So we've got um, four battleships, seven heavy cruisers, six light cruisers, three destroyers, and four advanced subs. Um, so let's go ahead and I have four advanced subs with first strikes. He doesn't have a dist well. I don't know with that aircraft on patrol, maybe that does negate first strike. So I'm going to say, just to be on the safe side, that first strike is negated. So let's go ahead. We've got four battleships at an eight. And we got two sixes and two ones. So we got two hits for his fighter and his light carrier. So his light carrier is a one and misses with a four. And his fighter is a six and hits with a two. So I think I'm going to lose a destroyer for my casualty. So I'll take off a destroyer and then take out his light carrier and fighter. So now that means that um, that zone is clear. So now the two transports can drop off the two infantry and the two Marines in Hokkaido, um, and that's worth a dollar. So let's go ahead and move the uh, Japanese down to 30 and the U.S. up to 73. Okay, and I think that's it for the U.S. combat. So now on to the KMT. Neither one of these tacks are that great, but let's see what we got. So we'll do this one down here in Hong Kong first. So I got a six. Uh, the two mountain infantry are twos. And then his infantry is a four, and his SL SNLF is a five. So my fighter first at a six. A nine misses. And then two twos. Four and 11 miss. His SNLF. An eight misses, his infantry at a four, 12 misses. Okay, my fighter at a six, <laughs> a 10 misses, two mountain infantry at two. Oh, there you go, a one and a nine, so he would clearly lose his infantry. His SNLF at a five, 10 misses, his infantry at a four, a three hit. So we each lose, I'll lose a mountain infantry and he'll lose his regular infantry. Okay, my fighter at a six. Six hits, his SNLF at a five, and eight misses. Whew, that was really close. Okay, so we do take Hong Kong, which is worth uh, $2. We take it with a single mountain infantry. So let's go ahead and move the KMT. Well, first we can move the Japanese down two to 28. And the KMT up to 10. And then our last attack is going to be in Shantung. So we've got 11 cavalry against 3 infantry. Okay, so let's do 5 and 6. So we'll do the first 6. I hit on a 1 or a 3. Uh, there's no mountains 
or river crossing. Um, ten or higher, I have to retreat. So the first six, we get two twos, a five, a six, or two sixes, two twos, a five, and a twelve. So we get two hits, and one has to retreat. Okay. So then we've got the remaining five. Eesh. Well, we got two twelves, a six, a nine, and a two. So we got our third hit. And two more have to retreat. Okay, so then a board gaming bro has three infantry at four. And a five, a six, and a five. So he just barely missed on all. So we end up taking Shantung back with three, six, looks like eight cavalry. So that's worth two. And down two for the CCP. So the KMT is now up to 12. And the CCP is now down to 10. And that should be it for combat. So on to non-combat. Let's stay over here in the Atlantic first. So I already checked with uh, Category Cow. He does not want to unsubmerge this sub to... Uh, contest these destroyers. So I got two destroyers up there in 30. They're going to come down one, two, three, four, down to C-Zone 103, and they can move the extra because of the major naval base. Then I've got this transport here up in 30, and it's going to take one infantry and a light armor, and I have four strategic uh, naval movements, so I'm going to use three of them here, and this transport's going to go one, two, three, four, five into uh, C-Zone 79. Drop that light armor and that infantry in Gibraltar. I'm then going to take the remaining infantry in New York, and he's going to rail all the way over to San Francisco. And then we have one more strategic naval movement left. This um, transport here in 100 is going to go 1, 2, 3 off of San Francisco. Then we've got this heavy cruiser here in 100. It's going to come up 1, 2, 3 into 62. And I forgot one combat. <laughs> I forgot the convoy rating. I think I never do it, so I completely forgot about it. So hopefully um, Madman Dan is okay with me going ahead and doing... Um, the uh, convoy rating there real quick, and then we'll finish off the non-combat. So the U.S. here and the Japanese. So we'll do the advanced sub first. That has a plus four. I don't believe Dan has radar or advanced anti-submarine warfare. He doesn't. So this will be a plus four for the U.S. on this roll. And we did two to one, so we're plus one on the die roll, and then the plus four for the advanced subs, that's five. So that should be the full five on the convoy line. But let's just do go ahead and roll the coastal sub. And the coastal sub, that's four to three. So now we're up to at least six. I think the coastal sub is only a plus one. So that would be like seven altogether, but it only can be maxed out at five. So the convoy line here. In 65 should be maxed out at 5. Okay, sorry for that. I should put down some uh, combat markers so I don't uh, forget. Regardless, on to the remaining non-combat. So we've got uh, this medium bomber here in Wake. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and land on the Kuril Islands. Then we've got this tactical bomber off of Midway, which is at an air base, so it can go five. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and also land on the uh, Kuril Islands. Um, then we had from the fleet that was here off of the Kuril Islands in 39, my five uh, light carriers had stayed behind. So they're now going to move down 1 to 56. And on four of those five light carriers are four jets. 
So then this jet here in the on the Kuril Islands is going to go one, two, and land on that one empty uh, light carrier. Then we've got seven advanced subs off of San Francisco. They are going to come over one, two, three, four. And again, they can go extra because of the major base, naval base. So there are seven advanced subs are now in 39. I believe that's it for the uh, U.S. And that might be it. I don't think the KMT. Oh, I got to land um, a couple of planes. So first the KMT fighter here in Hong Kong. It went one from Quang Tung to Hong Kong. So two Quang Tung, three Yunnan, four up to Sichuan. So that's up there with uh, those forces. And then we are going to go ahead over here. We've got to land our fighter uh, that took part in the Galapagos battle. It went one, two, and it's going to go three, four, and land in Peru. And then finally in South America, we've got this infantry in Chile is going to move up one to Peru. And the one in Katinga is going to move over one to the Amazons. And that should be it for uh, non-combat. So on to unit placement. We've got seven destroyers we purchased. They're going to all go down um, off of San Francisco here in C-Zone 64. We also have a light carrier and a jet fighter. And they're going to both also go down in uh, 64. We bought a uh, naval transport. That's going to go down in 64. And we've got two elite Marines. We're going to place them in San Francisco. And one regular Marine also down in San Francisco. Uh, we did lend lease the Canadians a uh, medium bomber. So that can make it from any of my major factories on the East Coast here. We'll put that in, what is that, Quebec? Oh, Ottawa. Put that in Ottawa. And then finally, we've got three infantry as the KMT. I'm on the fence what to do with these. I think we're going to put one... Uh, Actually, we're going to put two in Yunnan and one in Sichuan. And that should be it for the KMT. So I'll go over some territories and sea zones here in a minute. So on to income. So the U.S. is up to 73 uh, they spent everything they had, so they get a $12 bonus. That's $85. Let's go ahead and roll our wartime economy. So $85 plus $11, so $96. I, do, I might suck at tech, but kick ass with these uh, wartime economy rolls. That's $96. So we got 88 over there, so we need another 8. So that's our 96 for the United States. Uh, for the KMT, we spent 9 of our 11s. So that left us $2, and then we're at 12. So that should give them 14. So the U.S. 96, the KMT 14 next turn. So let's go through a couple of territories here. First here on the Atlantic side. So in the Galapagos Islands, we have two infantry and a Marine. In Sea Zone 103, we have four destroyers, two light cruisers, and two naval transports. In uh, Peru, we have three cavalry, one fighter, one artillery, and I believe it's up to eight infantry now, but let me just double check to make sure. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, six, yep, eight. So eight infantry, three cavalry, one artillery, uh, one fighter. For the KMT, in Hong Kong, we have a mountain infantry, Quang Tong, three militia, Hainan, a marine, Yunnan, two infantry, uh, Kui Chow, three militia, Nanking, four militia, Shantung, eight cavalry, and Sichuan, uh, four mountain infantry, five regular infantry, three cavalry, three militia, and a fighter. Uh, in C-Zone 65, we have a coastal sub and a, an advanced sub. Off of Midway, we have a heavy cruiser. San Francisco has two elite Marines, an infantry and a Marine. Uh, that sea zone has two naval transports, seven destroyers, and a light carrier with a jet fighter. On the Kuril Islands, we have a medium bomber and a tactical bomber. Um, in sea zone 39 is seven advanced subs. Hokkaido has two Marines and two infantry. There are now three destroyers in 39, uh, is that 38 or 30? 30? I think it's 38. 38. There are three destroyers in C-Zone 38. And in C-Zone 56, we have four battleships, seven heavy cruisers, six light cruisers, two destroyers, four advanced subs, two transports, and five light carriers with five jets, um, one each. And I believe all of Japan's um, naval facilities are now blockaded because I have at least three surface ships in both of those sea zones. So uh, that should blockade the Japanese, uh, meaning at this point they should only be able to collect income from their uh, home territories. So that will do it for the U.S. KMT, uh, turning things over to uh, Category Cow for Italy, and then uh, the Germans on turn 15.